distinguished colleagues, distinguished chairman, I'd like to share our experience, of our, our clinical experience of using therapy. What kind of, uh, how can we administer uh, immunotherapy? A patient comes to the doctor, and then he is fully examined, and then on the oncological commission, the process is it's free of charge, a quite frequent, a quite uh, fast, and patient may be hospitalized very frequent, very fast. It's understandable. Uh, the restrictions uh, of uh, medication. So there is a great number of patient flu, and there are problems. And to the patient is provided to the medication for the whole period of treatment. But there are tough criteria of inclusion and exclusion. That the patient should be without concomitant diseases with certain criteria of inclusion. There are different design. There may be a combination of chemotherapy together with immunotherapy. It's important to say to include the patient in a clinical trial with immunotherapeutic substance, it's necessary to detect PDL depression or mutational load. The second scenario uh, how a patient can receive immunotherapy, it's uh, the extended access program. We had two programs in 2015. Uh, there was uh, the problem with a uh, program with nevolumab and it's a free treatment. Uh, there are uh, more extensive criteria. Uh, the minus is uh, uh, the long paperwork. I'd like to speak about extensive access program, nivolumab. It's uh, the patient of the 3 and 4B stages. Uh, they may have one or two lines of therapy. Patients with ECOG from 0 to 2, patients were included uh, with possible brain metastasis and with activating mutations. Uh, the procedure was uh, the following. Everything was started with the informed consent. Uh, then concilium happened uh, with the approval. And then uh, we submitted documents to the company of sponsor, to the ministry. And then uh, the medications were procured for the certain patients. 20 days passed. Uh, uh, after the writing of consent, informed consent and uh, administration of medication, 35 patients were included, 62 male, 68 female, the age from 39 to 80, ECOG 2 stage. This group of patients couldn't have suited for the clinical trial because in the clinical trial, usually zero ECOG 0 0.1. Uh, uh, our patients, uh, they received from 1 to 45 uh, uh, nivolumab injections, uh, uh, average on average 10. It was a uh, non squamous cell cancer. And uh, the second line therapy, there 52% of patients received uh, as a second line nivolumab treatment, and more than 50% of patients they receive in the second and the fourth line of treatment. As to ineffectiveness, we can see that 11.5 patients. Uh, they had the partial response stabilization, 42%. And 45% unfortunately progressed against treatment. 
The patients, uh, they were included in the Russian prospective trial as to evaluation of quality of life. Seven sites were participated together with the quality life center studies. 76 patients were included, the median of age 61, following up median 7.8, control of the disease in 59 patients, the overall survival rate median 10.2 months, uh, the progression-free survival 40. 4.2 months. Uh, it's due to the fact that 19% of patients were included with the COG-2 and 20% of patients, uh, they were there with brain metastasis and more than 50% of patients, they received more than two lines of treatment uh, on the time of inclusion into the extensive access program. Adverse events uh, were in 34% patients and uh, uh, three, four degrees of uh, of 8%. It was uh, dyspnea, uh, liver enzyme elevation as to quality of life. More than 50% of patients in 12 weeks of therapy, they have stabilization and improvement in the quality of life. Uh, the advantages of a program of extensive uh, access for patients is opportunity to get free of charge treatment before the registration of the medication in the country for the doctor. Uh, doctor can ac uh, achieve experience without tough uh, limits of the clinical trials. It's a patient 70 years of age with cardiovascular disease or with a, a heart failure of the second functional class. The patient has PDL expression 1, 90%. As so the first line of therapy, it was recommended to have premlumizumab. The patient received treatment in February and uh, uh, the first evaluation of effectiveness so in two months, we can see positive dynamics. Uh, the reduction in the tumor, in the mass tumor, and then patient continued treatment on the sixth uh, uh, reg regimen. We can see the partial regress and uh, uh, positive dynamics. Uh, the relief of uh, uh, cough and dyspnea, no adv adverse events. Without this treatment, uh, the question was whether or not we could have given him uh, the chemotherapy, taking into account his uh, comorbidities. Patient in 2015 was operated because of the upper lobe of the right lung, uh, the uh, squamous cell. In two years progression, uh, uh, locus, uh, loc uh, foci, uh, locuses in the um, uh, lungs, uh, temetrisat cytoplaxin uh, was conducted. The patient was followed up during eight months, uh, then progressed. Uh, the lesions in the lungs were detected growing lesions, uh, Pematrix set uh, was uh, administered uh, with positive effect, uh, then progression in October, the nivolumab therapy was prescribed. Here you can see the images from the beginning of the treatment in October. Up to much. Clear positive dynamics, uh, the reduction of these lesions. The next clinical case, I'd like to say that not uh, always, even if uh, we uh, expect positive results, we can achieve these results. Now, uh, this is uh, the patient's PDL1, 90% expression. In the beginning, patient was given chemo and immunotherapy. The patient received two sets of chemotherapy, plucked it as cell, uh, and then uh, uh, he progressed, uh, new lesions appeared in the liver and in the lungs and in the brain. The patient uh, was uh, exposed to radiotherapy, the brain, then the third, the fourth line of treatment. But unfortunately, in six months after verification of the disease, the patient died. The last clinical case, I'd like to say that talking about immunotherapy, mostly we talk about the fact that this treatment is 
quite acceptable level of toxicity, but there are cases and we can't manage toxicity. Now we are talking about pulmonitis. The patient with PDL1 expression, 90%, it's uh, pre-treated patients, surgical treatment 2017, six cycles of adjuvant uh, uh, therapy, then one injection in February, nevolumab. And so we have this clinical uh, picture of image uh, deterioration of pulmonitis. Uh, uh, we try to use high dosage of glucocorticoids, but due to the uh, due to the deterioration of dyspnea after the first administration, the patient died. Now I'd like to uh, stop clinical cases and start interactive voting. We can use our smartphones so on the OS or Android. You will see the uh, link mobile dot vote. Dear audience, how frequently do you use immunotherapy? In every case, in patients with unexpected effectiveness, uh, I have restricted experience. Uh, and the last question, what is immunotherapy? The majority of people, they have the restricted experience in using immunotherapy, in, a, in prescribing. There are people with a sense of humor and it's pleasant. Every fourth in the room can administer, can prescribe immunotherapy uh, if it's possible. If we if we combine this uh, uh, in every possible combine these answers in, uh, in every possible case, and uh, if I expect uh, effectiveness, if we put together these two the, these two answers, uh, the result is very promising. In the room, there are brave people who are left in the room, and they are trying to apply new methods of treatment if it's possible. Let's continue voting. Next question. How can a patient receive immunotherapy in your establishment free of charge, your participation in a clinical trial on his uh, own uh, paying for treatment or no uh, no uh, no possibilities, no opportunities to receive the treatment at all? Here it says standardized answers in clinical trials. We have more opportunities, but I think in the near future, due to improvement uh, of financing, uh, we will uh, achieve better results. Uh, uh, prescribing the therapy free of charge uh, cover reimbursed uh, that treatment reimbursed by insurance, medical insurance. And the last question, no other opportunities, no answers at all. It's a good, it's a positive point. In what line of therapy do you prescribe immunotherapy? In the first line in monotherapy, in the first line in combination with chemotherapy, in the second line or as a next line of treatment?
as uh, the second line the majority of answers so the second line that uh, good results in the first line 21 percent and pdl one more than one 50 percent usually we uh, prescribe as monotherapy as a first line um, quite large percentage of pdl one positive what are the prospects for the development of immunotherapy in the Russian Federation? Immunotherapy will replace chemotherapy, will be actively used together with the chemotherapy in different lines of treatment, will be applied only in singular patients with the proof for confirmed expected effectiveness of treatment, or chemotherapy is a golden standard now. Seven percent of optimists, it's me. In fact, if we are talking about the first, uh, the second, the third stage, it's 60 percent of patients. Chemo and radiotherapy, now adjuvant immunotherapy with full responses, we may have the situation when the role of thoracic surgeons will be diminished. But if in the Russian Federation the program starts of a normal screening, when we start to detect patients with the first stages, early stages of the diseases, the need for precision surgeons will be needed. But immunotherapy can expand uh, the opportunities of the thoracic surgeons uh, at uh, the fourth stage of the disease. I have the idea. Maybe there will be time uh, that we will treat uh, the pulmonary cancer as a germinogenic tumors first chemotherapy, and then we will remove the residual lesions and. Uh, According to the immune response, we will decide what to do with the patient. Maybe this time will come. Of course, uh, maybe biopsy should be done uh, more frequently. Maybe we over-treat some patients and under-treat another pa group of patients. 